Hello, welcome to Classical Mat Pilates. My name is Sophia and I'll be guiding you through today's practice. Today we will be going through the 34 classical mat Pilates exercises and we will be incorporating the use of a ball or you can use a very densely rolled towel. That will work as well. But I have a ball, I'm gonna use that today. All right, so come to um, supine onto your mat very mindfully, recline, all the way down, one vertebra at a time, never any harsh movements here. And just start with a full body stretch, with your arms overhead, your toes forward, you can even arch your spine, breathe in and breathe out. All right, from here, bend your knees one at a time, reach your arms up towards the ceiling, take a deep breath in, as you exhale, move into a chest lift, reach towards your thighs. And just like you roll down mindfully, roll yourself up. You can use your hands or you can move without your hands. Now we'll be incorporating the ball. The ball will slide right in between the shoulder blades when you lower down. So you'll adjust it as you lower. Take an inhale breath here. As you exhale, option to place your hands behind your knees or reach forward and begin to roll down one vertebra at a time adjusting the ball so that again, it lands right in between the shoulder blades. Once you arrive there, use your inhale breath to scoop your belly in and come back to a seated position. It's a little warm up with spinal mobility. Take a deep breath in, exhale, keep this length and curl down one vertebra at a time. Once your shoulders tap, inhale, scoop your belly in and come back up. Let's do that one more time. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, scoop and curl, adjusting the ball once more. Once your shoulders land, this time walk your heels in, place your hands behind your head, just palms stacked, avoid interlacing your fingers, and then lean back over the ball. Allow your elbows to open wide so that your chest opens, a stretch for your pecs, your shoulders. Point your tailbone forward towards the, your heels so that you move into the neutral alignment of your pelvis. You're not overly arched or overly tucked. It's nice and neutral. Walk your heels in if you need to. Heels are in line with your sits bones, knees in line with your hips. So you're in supine hook position here. Take a deep breath in, breathing in to your diaphragm, your upper ribs, keeping your belly engaged. Exhale, let's move into our first chest lift. Use your entire exhale breath to lift your shoulders up, gaze is at your belly button. Inhale, you lower down, avoid flaring your ribs, so you're keeping everything engaged. Exhale, chest lift, gaze at your belly button. And we're preparing for a hundred here, so let's repeat this about five more times. Exhale to lift, being empty at the top of your breath, and inhale to lower. Just like that, head is heavy in your hands, press down equally through your feet. So Pilates has some principles. Classical mat Pilates is all based around the foundation of the six principles. The first one being breath. We're really focusing on our diaphragmatic breathing in our upper rib cage, full inhale as we lower and full exhale out the mouth as we lift. I think we have one more here. Inhale, lower down, exhale, lift up and we'll hold. Option to stay here or lift one shin to tabletop, followed by the other, moving into the hundreds. Reach your left hand forward, followed by your right, and then begin to pump your arms up and down, moving into our hundreds. The breath is through the nose for five counts, and out the mouth for five counts. So again, breath being very important here. We're starting to incorporate it right away. Keeping the belly in, we're breathing into the upper rib cage. Very active with your arms. So you're pumping your palm, hands up and down with very active and toned triceps. Avoid pumping your chest forward. Everything stays nice and neutral and it's just the shoulders moving and your breath. You can stay here with your shins at tabletop or extend your legs to the sky or even into a diagonal or lower your feet to the ground. Keep going, 50 more counts here. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four four, five. It's an inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Shh. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale. 
Breathe in, two, three, four, five. Keep your neutral spine. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Twin more counts. This is a good warm up, huh? Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Last 10. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Pause here. Lower your feet to the ground first. Place your hands behind your head and lean over the ball. A nice stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. This is such a great stretch for our postural muscles and our chest, opening all that tight musculature that we develop from our day-to-day -day activities, driving with our chest rounded forward, working on the computer, so many things. So this, this stretch is really beneficial. All right, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, move into a little chest lift, reach your right hand forward, followed by your left. You can grab onto your thighs or use your Use your abdominals to scoot yourself up. I have a little back pain today, so um, using the ball really helps with that too. From here, we're moving into our roll up. So extend your legs forward and place your ball. Let's just take a stretch first. Place your ball on top of your legs, reach for your toes, soften your knees, and just fold forward. Pull your belly in to stretch your lower back. All right, from here, place the ball in between your ankles. Squeeze the ball in between your ankles and flex your feet. Pull your belly in, sit up nice and tall into your sits bones, and then scoop through your abdominals, reaching your arms parallel forward in front of your toes. Keep this seat curved as you exhale, squeeze the ball. Keep your shoulders down your back and begin to lower down one vertebra at a time. My pants are getting stuck on the mat, so I need to scoot back. But lower down one vertebra at a time. Once you reach the bottom, keep your ribs connected, sweep your biceps by your ears like a full body stretch, and then exhale, we come back up, gaze towards your toes, squeeze that ball, keep your belly pulled in, C curve forward, fold as you inhale, and then exhale, you return back to your roll down. So this is a continuous loop of rolling down and rolling up. Our second exercise, you have the option to modify by bending your knees. You can keep the ball in between your feet, or even place the ball between your knees. You can also hold on to your thighs like we did earlier. Keep that C curve as you reach forward and then roll back down. So, so many options. You can also use a strap. That helps also at the um, soles of your feet. We'll continue for four more counts here. Our second principle of Pilates is concentration. So we're concentrating, especially here, on finding that nice articulation, like we're rolling down on a crank, one vertebra at a time, connecting each of our spine uh, bones to the floor, our vertebra. And then using the same degree of concentration to lift back up, keeping your, your heels rooted down. That's very important. If you feel your heels pop up as you roll down or as you come up, modify by bending your knees, the ball really helps to engage the inner thighs, thereby um, recruiting more muscles to help you stay grounded in your feet. Let's do two more here. Roll up and fold forward. Remember to pull your belly in as you reach forward, like spine stretch. The more that you draw in your abdominals, the more the back of your body can open. One more here. Exhale to roll up. Squeeze that ball. You see how it kind of helps ground down the feet. And then inhale, roll yourself up to seated. Place your heels on top of the ball now, on top. And your ball is more towards your calves than, than your uh, heels. So a little higher here. My water bottle, a little higher. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, just find a little stretch first. Soften your knees. We'll roll down like this. Pull your belly in and exhale. Go around your heels. You can point and flex your feet. Lower down one vertebra at a time. Our next exercise is leg circles. Keep your right heel on top of the ball. Bend your left knee into your chest. Adjust your hips so they're nice and level. And then send your leg to the sky. Flex your right ankle, your bottom leg, and press it into the ball, keeping your hips squared. You can point or flex your top leg, just find a little ankle mobility. From here, extend your arms up to a T or a low V, opening across your chest. Moving into our leg circles, draw your left leg across the midline of your body. 
down towards the bottom of your mat, out to the left into an abduction of your hip, and then come back through center to finish up the circle. And then we find more fluidity. We circle around and then come back to center. Circle around and back to center. Continue to repeat that. So your bottom leg is very active, keeping your hips squared. And the circle with your top leg can be big, but it can also be very small. This is an abdominal exercise, but it's also mostly for the hip. So you're winding the hip in the hip socket. Pause here and reverse the direction of the circle. You're using all the musculature of your leg. Your quad is really feeling this work. You can soften your knee if you need to. That's a nice modification. You can even bend your bottom knee if you need to as well. Keep your ribs connected, shoulders on the floor. Now those same smaller circles if you're working on all that stability. Pause here, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, slowly lower your left leg all the way to the ground towards the ball. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So adjust the ball if you need to, placing the ball underneath your left ankle. Bend your right knee into your chest. And again, a little higher. It's more on the um, Achilles tendon or right below the calf than it is on the heel. And then send your right leg to the sky, level at your hips, moving into the circles. First, I'll flex and put my feet. We're finding centering, which is another um, principle of Pilates. Find that balance between everything we do, centering ourselves and focusing on inwards so that we feel fully balanced, both um, emotionally, um, intellectually, and physically when we're done with this exercise. From here, like circles, draw your leg across the midline of your body, down, out to the right, abduction of the hip, and then back to center. So we're moving in all range of motion, the internal rotation of the hip, down, out, and back through center. Notice if your hip hikes up towards your underarm, keep it depressed so that your, your waist is nice and long on both sides. That's it, use your breath, inhale. And then exhale to scoot back to center. One more time in this direction. And then we'll repeat it on the other side. Notice if your bottom leg becomes fatigued or tired or it's not working so hard, press your heel into it. So then you're also engaging the back of your left glute, which is why I like using the ball. It adds a little bit of lift so we can find more of that activation. Whew. Two more here. It's not easy. It looks easy, but this exercise is super hard. Pause here, inhale, breath. Exhale, we will lower down, lower down one vertebra, or one breath at a time. Take a full body stretch, take your feet off of the ball. Inhale here, exhale, roll it for transition. Reach your arms forward, squeeze the ball, and lift yourself up back to a seat. Since we're using the ball today, we're going to use do a little bit more transitioning so that we have the ball for each exercise. Then we lower down one vertebra at a time. All right, from here, place the ball underneath your head like a little pillow. Place your arms down by your sides, flatten across your shoulders as you bend one knee into your chest, finding your neutral position of your pelvis. So this is just a variation that I like for this next exercise, which is single leg stretch with the ball underneath the head. One chin to tabletop, followed by the other. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, single leg stretch. Keep your left leg in, straighten your right leg out to a diagonal. And then you switch it out, left knee and right leg out. And then you switch and switch. Continue to breathe. It's an inhale, inhale, followed by an exhale, exhale. I like this variation with the ball underneath the head because it lifts you into a little bit of flexion, mimicking what we would do on the reformer with the headrest up. We're working on keeping our neutral line of our pelvis. Of course, you can take the full variation by lifting your head off of the ground, or even the full variation, hands to knee and shin, hands to knee and shin. Keep going, we'll go for eight. Last seven, with your head on the a ball though, you still feel your abdominals working. And the lower your extended leg is to the ground, the more challenging it is. Last four, three, both knees to center, and two. On one, both knees to center, grab onto behind your thighs, and lift your shoulders off of the mat. So now my head is off of the ball, moving into double leg stretch. Extend your legs to a diagonal, biceps by your ears, and exhale, pull everything back in. 
Inhale, extend. Exhale, sweep back in. Keep going just like that. You have the option to do this with your head on the ball. So you're still in that slight flexion, but you're not lifting or cranking your head up. But you know best what you need today. So take the variation that serves you. The lower you lower your legs to the ground, the more challenging it is, even with the head on the ball. Keep going, avoid letting go of your abdominals. You want them active the whole time. Again, we're finding control. Another principle, Pilates. Control in our exercises, along with centering concentration and moving with the breath. Inhale out, exhale in. Two more like that. Breathe in and breathe out. Last time, inhale. Exhale, pull it in, hold it here, bring your feet together, knees apart, and draw your knees into your chest for a little lower back stretch. I like feet together, knees apart, because it broadens across your lower back and allows you to, um, to have more massage there, that lumbar sacral area. All right, from here, place your feet on the floor. Inhale, your arms overhead towards the ceiling, you can bend, or keep your legs straight, roll up for transition. Exhale as we roll up, taking a forward full stretch. All right, come up to a seated position, grab your ball, and place your ball in between your ankles once again. I'm going to face you because next, we're getting into our spine stretch. So, ball in between your ankles once again. Flex your feet and squeeze into the ball. Sit up nice and tall. You can soften your knees, especially if you tend to round in your lower back or even have a seat on that rolled up towel. That's a nice place to use that here. Reach your arms forward, parallel to the floor, very active in your triceps. Take a deep breath in, sitting up a little taller. Exhale, spine stretch. Think of diving the top of your head in between your knees. Exhale, dive forward and down, keeping your arms parallel to the floor as you stretch them forward beyond your toes. And then inhale, you stack your spine back up to seated. So that's the exercise. Exhale, repeat forward and down with the crown of your head. And inhale to roll back up. As you're doing this exercise, I'm going to face forward again. Make sure that your lower back stays exactly where it is. So only the upper half of your body is lifting and lowering down. Hopefully I can do it correctly on the video and come back up. This remains nice and stable. Exhale forward and down and inhale, come back up. So essentially, it's a crunch on yourself. You're lifting and crunching forward and down and then stacking your spine back up to seated. Let's repeat it four more times. Up and over. And then inhale, roll up, deep breath in. Exhale, up and over. And inhale, back in, up to uh, seated. One more time, breathe in. Exhale, up and over. And inhale, roll up. Pause it here. Bend your knees in towards you. Uh, here we'll use the ball behind the calves, right? Moving into our uh, rolling like a ball here. This, we could also do open leg rocker here, but um, my hamstrings are a little tight today, so I'm going to do rolling like a ball instead. The ball behind your calves, or even behind your ankles, just is a nice, Sensory um, tool to make sure that you're not using momentum or kicking your legs. Point your toes, sit up nice and tall, and then C curve into your lower back. When you roll down, it's only into your shoulders, not above that, and then you come back up to this position. So it's an inhale to roll back, and exhale to come back to seated. Just like that, roll back, and come to seated. So I like the ball because you notice how I'm not kicking my legs. I can't because I have that ball. And I can even release my hands whew, and see if I can do it without taking away that momentum as well. So there's that variation. If you'd like to go into full uh, open leg rocker, you grab onto your ankles, keep that C curve, you can even bend your knees, and then you roll back onto your back, which is not in my body today, so I'm not going to do it. But two more times just like that. Inhale, roll back. Exhale, forward. Woo! And again, not for everybody. So be very mindful of what you're doing and when you're doing it. All right, from here, extend your legs forward. Let's take another stretch. A little bit of stretch in between. Put your balance out. 
reach your ball forward, now in between your hands. Exhale, roll down for transition. One vertebra at a time. All right, bend your knees one at a time. Lengthen your pelvis forward, find your um, neutral alignment, bring your right shin to tabletop, followed by your left. Place your ball in between your knees and squeeze the ball. Open your arms to a T position. Moving into hip sway, our next exercise would be corkscrew. However, hip sway is the modification, which we'll do today. On your inhale, lower your knees towards the right. Shoulders remain grounded on the floor. It's not a supine twist. It's actually an abdominal oblique exercise. Then use your exhale to return your legs back to center. And then repeat to the left side. So up and over to the left. And then exhale, bring it back to center. Squeeze the ball as you do your exhale and keep your knees in one line. So there's a tendency for one knee to kind of fall back as you rotate. But keep them in one line and then exhale back to center. You have the option to add on by straightening your legs. You can even place the ball in between your ankles and do the same thing with straight legs. You can even lower your legs into a diagonal and do the same thing. Lengthening the lever adds a lot more weight for the abdominals to work. So be considerate of that, right? We're working with precision as well. Another principle of Pilates it's all about being precise. So if you can do this very precisely in the modification, then that's where you should be today. And that's a great place to be. If you can do everything with precision in the most advanced variation, then maybe that's where you need to be today. So just be mindful and honor where you're at. This is a practice, not a perfect. I love to say that. Very important to remember. All right, come back through center. Take uh, your ball overhead, let your knees fall to the right now into a full supine twist, leg arms overhead to kind of stretch the side body however you can. Take your arms to a T as well. Come back through center, use your abdominals to tap, shift my hips, and then let your knees lower to the left as you tilt your chin to the right. Ooh, some lower back aches today, so. This is such a good stretch. All right, come back through center. Roll up for transition. This time, place the ball in between your thighs. Inhale, your arms overhead. Let me keep my knees bent. Exhale, chest lift. Squeeze the ball and roll up. Whew, harder than even straight-legged sometimes. I'm gonna face forward for our next exercise, which is spine twist followed by saw. Ball in between the ankles again, flex your feet. However, actually no, we're sitting a little wider, so place the ball to the side for now. And um, separate your feet a little wider than your hips. You can see in the, in the video, it's a little wider than my hips. Arms to a T or hands behind your head. Again, sit up nice and tall, bend your knees if you need to. I'm gonna do hands behind the head today. Take an inhale breath. Exhale, rotate towards the right side. Once you find your full rotation, you need to take two exhale breaths shh, shh, to pulse and go a little bit further. Inhale, come through center, spiraling on the axis of your spine to the left. Exhale, double pulse. Shh, shh. So inhale, center. Exhale, double pulse to the right. Shh, shh. Inhale, center. Exhale, double pulse to the left. Shh, shh. Keep going just like that. Now I'm going to try it seated on the ball because sometimes that little lift for your pelvis will tip your hips forward so you can find a little bit more length in your spine. So exhale, pulse, shh, shh, center. Exhale, pulse, shh, shh. Notice if your heels are shifting side to side as you do this exercise. You want to ground them down and keep them nice and level. So the only thing that's moving is the rotation of your spine. Hands behind your head kind of help actually to make sure that you're not going beyond your rotation into your shoulders, right? If you open your arms to a T, you also have to be mindful that you're pausing right where your rotation is and you're not going beyond. That'll make sense if you try it out, the two. All right, from here, we'll move into saw. We'll do hands behind that today. Take a deep breath in. This is a combination of what we just did as well as spine stretch. Exhale, rotate to the right. Then think of diving the crown of your head towards your left knee, aiming your left elbow towards your left pinky toe. In the full variation, you'd reach left hand forward, right hand back. We're gonna do this today. And then inhale, you round back up, 
come through to center, spiral to the left, and then exhale up and over, elbow towards your left knee. Roll up, come through center, rotate, and fold forward. So this is like spine stretch that we were doing in the center. However, now we're in this lateral um, rotation, right? So we're getting into our obliques, our obliques, so lateral flexion, and then we get into our obliques. Keep your feet nice and steady as you move side to side so that they're not shifting forward and back. I'm gonna face forward, keep going two more on each side. Breathe in and breathe out. Step through center. Breathe in and breathe out. All right, come through center. Bring your feet together. Let's bring the soles of your feet together this time. Sit them nice and tall and then fold forward, releasing any tension that might have accumulated in your hip flexors. Take a deep breath in, stretching the inner hips as well. And a breath out. All right, next we get into our prone work, which is our swan prep. We will we'll use our ball today as a fun variation. So shift your weight to one hip, swing your legs behind you, and come onto all fours, tabletop or quadruped position. Spread your fingers wide, stack your knees underneath your hips. And let's move through a couple cat cows. Exhale to a cat pose. Curl your pelvis forward and down. Lift your mid back to the sky and spread your shoulder blades apart. And then inhale, neutral spine. Think of pulling your chest forward and your tail back. Or find a little extension, a little cow pose like yoga. And then exhale back to cat. This is also abdominal work. We would do this on our Cadillac, uh, all fours on the Cadillac. And then inhale, neutral or a little extension. All right, pause here. I told you we'd make this a little bit more fun today. So before we get onto our bellies in prone position, get onto your forearms. Option for forearms flat to the floor, or you can even stack your forearms on top of your ball. That's much more challenging. I'm not going to do that today, but just showing you. And then walk your knees back into either a modified forearm plank or tuck your toes with your knees. Breathe here, 10 second hold. Think of driving your heels back. Squeeze your inner thighs together, engage your glutes. Press the floor away from you. Breathe here for five. Last four, three, two, on one. Lower your knees down to the ground. Lower your hips to the floor. Take a little stretch. Scoot your elbows forward so they stack right underneath your shoulders. And then exhale, lower your chest down, grab your ball, and place your ball out in front of you. Palms stack on top of the ball above your, the crown of your head. Gaze down in between your biceps. Press into your pubic bone and the tops of your feet. Very important to keep your core engaged. As you inhale, start to lift your chest into swan. Pull your shoulders down your back, and as you lift your chest, the ball will roll towards you. Exhale, you lower back down. So as an inhale to lift up, let's count each count for two. And then exhale to roll down for two. Breathe in as you roll up. Breathe out as you lower down. Let's put the opposite hand on top and repeat that three more times. Lift up for two and lower down for two. So avoid going beyond your range of motion. Pause once you, you are finding your full upper back extension and then come back down, keeping your pubic bone grounded so that your core is engaged. And lower, avoid cranking your neck also. So think of tucking your chin ever so slightly the back of your neck is long. And lower down from here, flatten your elbows to the floor, place the ball right underneath your uh, forehead and your palms to the ground. So you're creating like a triangle shape. If you have the option to stay here, you can lower your forehead onto the ball as a modification or stay uh, lifted, shoulders down your back, pull your belly in so that you're not flopping into your mid back. From here, moving into single leg kick. Bend your right knee, toes towards the sky. Pulse your toes up. Keep your thigh lifted as you straighten your leg and then lower your leg back down to the ground. So repeat that on the left. Point your toes. It's two pulses to lift your thigh. Keep it lifted as you straighten your leg and lower it down nice and long. And again, modification, forehead to the ball. And you do the same exact thing. 
All right, from here, things to very, be very mindful of is that you're not dumping into your mid back. You're keeping your core engaged. It's like you're almost doing a form, sort of like a form plank in your upper body. All right, let's do one more on each side. Pulse, pulse, and lift, lengthen. Pulse, pulse, lift, and lengthen. From here, stretch, just rest your forehead onto the ball or even onto your palm. You can bend your knees and windshield wipe your legs side to side. Next would be double kick. However, I'm not feeling it in my back today, so we'll skip that one today. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Press up to all fours. Bring your feet together. Knees separate as you fold forward into a little rest pose or child's pose. You can walk your hands off of your mat to the left side. Stretch your right side body. And then over to the other side. It's nice to do these forward folds after some after spinal extension to balance out the body. And then walk yourself up to seated on your heels and we'll prepare for our next exercise. So neck pull is next. Walk forward towards the top of your mat. Have a seat to a one hip and extend your legs out in front of you. Again, follow the in between the ankles for this next exercise. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water, not a chug, just a little sip. Okay. Fall between your ankles. Next is neck pull. So neck pull is very similar to roll down. However, it's a lot more challenging. So I'll show you a few variations. Again, ball between your ankles just to keep the inner thighs engaged. That will help a lot. Keep your heels grounded. Hands behind your head like we did in our saw today. Take a deep breath in as you sit up nice and tall. We start with a flat back instead of a C curve. From here, you hinge back. Hinge back. When you can't get any further, then you scoop and roll down keeping your hands behind your head. Breathe in at the bottom. Now this is where it gets super hard. Exhale, chest lift. You're supposed to keep your head, hands behind your head traditionally. However, to modify one hand or both hands reach forward, like roll up, and then you return your hands behind your head when you can. This is where neck pull comes from. So we're not actually pulling on our neck, but it looks like that, right? As you fold forward, keeping your belly nice and pulled in, like we do it in a roll up. And then you step back up to a seated and repeat it. Same thing. You can also bend your knees. That's what I'm gonna do today. It'll help my lower back. So heels are a little further away from your sit bones, sit nice and tall. Exhale, hinge back, squeeze the ball. When you can't get any further, then you tuck and lower down. Breathe in here. Breathe out, chest lift. One hand or both hands to your thighs, hands behind your head, and then you fold forward and then come back up to seated and repeat that. So that's the flow. Our last um, principle in our Pilates uh, principles is flow. So once you have harnessed your breath, your concentration, centered yourself, meaning that this isn't a mindless exercise, you're thinking about everything as you do it, thinking about how you feel, how your breath is moving, how you even feel energetically, right? Are you feeling positive and light? Are you thinking about it? That's what centering is essentially. Once we develop control and precision, then we just get into that flow. So each exercise becomes a flow. You hinge back, round back, lay down, and then repeat, right? We're flowing it out. It has no ending, it's continuous. But we don't do everything a million times in Pilates either because we're working on all those principles the entire time. We're really thinking about it. We don't have to do a million because we're not doing it mindlessly. We're doing it very intentionally. That's what it's all about. I hope that was enjoyable learning about the principles today. And we'll talk about them still as we continue. Take a full body stretch at the bottom. Let's finish that off. Then bend your knees, walk your heels in, grab onto your ball. All right, from here, we're getting into our next exercises. So place your hands down by your sides, pick up your hips, and slide the ball or the towel, whatever you have, underneath your hips on, uh, right? So your sacrum lies right on, to, on top of it. And if you feel this bulging in your mid back, then that's not the right spot. Slide it down further towards your sit bones, towards your tailbone, and that should feel like 
the shelf of your sacrum. From here, palms flat to the mat. We're moving into our scissors and bicycle with our ball underneath us today. A little fun variation. Bring your right shin to tabletop, followed by your left. Find your neutral alignment of your pelvis. Then straighten your legs up to the sky. Broaden across your chest. Keep your left leg in. Lower your right leg down. And then you switch it out. Left leg up, right leg down. And switch. And switch. The breath in. In. And then out. Out. With our hips on the ball, it allows us to have a little bit more range of motion in our hips. So we go a little beyond, um, almost into an extension of the hip when we near the bottom. You can lift your head off of the ground and find the full variation of scissors, or even keep your head down to the floor and reach your arms overhead. But with the hips above, right, a little lifted, it also helps you stabilize a bit more because you're using all those little muscles to keep yourself stable. Let's go for eight, seven, six, five, four, moving into bicycle in three, two, on one, moving into bicycle. Let's keep left leg up, right leg down. As you move into your bicycle, you draw your right knee into your chest, lower your left leg down, and then scissor your legs up. And then once again, out. So we are finding scissors at the bottom before we move on. You see how I'm pausing in that scissor and then moving into bicycle, scissor, and then bicycle. That's very important. So we're not just doing this with our knees, we're pausing and pause and then reverse it. That becomes a little bit more challenging. Scissor. See how I'm doing that? Yeah, Does that makes sense. So try, try the wrong way first, just pumping your legs and then pause and do it the right way. <laughs> Let's go for the count of eight, five, seven, six, five, four, and this is a lot of work for the abdominals. Three, even with our head on the ground. Two, on one, both legs up, then bend your knees into your chest, feet together, knees apart, knees into your shoulders with our hips lifted a little bit. It's a nice stretch for the lower back. All right, from here, return your knees to center. Lower one leg down, followed by the other. Pick up your hips, remove the ball, and then lower down one vertebra at a time, like bridge pose. And next, we will get into bridge, so we'll loosen up the lower back a bit. I like ball in between the thighs here. We will use that variation. I put it, yeah, put it the long ways in between your thighs, right? So you might not have a ball like I do, but if you do, you're using a towel, long ways in between the thighs. Heels in line with your sits bones, knees are parallel to one another, palms flat and active to the floor. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bridge. Scoop your pelvis up, press through your heels and palms. As you roll up one vertebra at a time, first bridge, become acquainted with it. Send energy out of your knees. Pull your pubic bone and your ribs in one line. So you're scooping your belly in, being more of a hammock shape in your body versus a bridge, right? We're thinking more of a hammock. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, lower down one vertebra at a time. Press into your heels and hands and really try to find that articulation. Articulation is one of the major goals of this exercise, initiated from the core. And then let's do the same thing a little faster. So up for two and down for two with the articulation. Don't forget to squeeze your ball. With the ball in between the thighs, we're bringing a little bit more awareness to the adductor, the inner thighs, to stabilize the hips and engage the lower belly. All right, so we want to stay nice and stable. We're lifting up very precisely and lower down very precisely without shifting side to side. And that is just something to work on. Let's pause here at the top and now squeeze the ball in. Now we're gonna have fun with the ball. So just squeeze it in. Let's get those inner thighs working. Squeeze for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Pause it here, keep the squeeze, pulse your hips up and up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one. Now hinge from your hips, tap your hips down, and lift it up. So it's a tap and lift, tap 
and let there's so many fun variations to take in our bridge so we're going to play with a couple today because who doesn't love a nice glute burn right let's go for eight and lower seven and six keep it up in five four three keep it up in two Last one, keep it up, squeeze the ball in and in for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, squeeze in two, on one, hold it in, hold your hips for 10, nine, eight, and seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, stay lifted, rise up onto your tippy toes, and now lower down one, vertebra at a time. We're going to move the ball for a moment. Bring the soles of your feet together. Open your knees out like a butterfly. Release your inner thighs after all that work. Take a deep breath in. Center yourself and breathe out. Bring your hands to your, your knees and fold your knees in together like a book. Extend your arms overhead and then roll onto your left side to start. Left side for a sideline series. Optional lay on your bottom arm like a pillow. Since we have our ball, I'm gonna use the ball as a little pillow underneath my head, right? I'm gonna bend my elbow so that I'm um, using my bicep as well. Line your back with the back of your mat, pull your ribs in so your core is engaged, and then bend your knees so that your thigh is parallel to the top of your mat. Level out your side bodies. Pick up your bottom rib off the floor. Bop, top hand to the floor like a little tripod or top hand to your hip or even top arm extended. We'll start with our clam series. So we lift the right leg up in line with the hip, lift up for two and then lower for two. So up for two and lower for two. That's it, just a lift and lower to start. We're working on our ab adductors, our outer hips. Whew. Bottom hip is working so hard just to stabilize the structure of your body. Let's go for four more here. That's three. We'll incorporate three exercises today. There's, again, so many variations you can take in these sideline series, but today we'll do our clams. All right, pause here. Bring your knees together, point through your right leg, and then exhale, send it out. So in for two, knees tap, out for two. In for two, moving from internal rotation into that addu uh, abduction out with the hip. Whew. Yes, you feel it right away. Again, keep everything pulled in, bottom rib off of the floor. Let's go for four, three, two, last one. Pause it here, lower your leg in line with your hip. Flex your ankle, now we move into our kicks. So extend your leg forward, point your toes, and then kick it back beyond hip extension, so behind you. Flex forward, point and kick it back. And then we continue, flex forward, and point and kick it back. This is, one, this is the traditional exercise for our sideline work. And this would be taught, again, like this, or eventually on the forearm with the chest lifted. You can try it. Let's go for four more here. Point and sweep it back. Three, point and sweep, finding that full range of motion in the hip. From flexion to extension, keeping your hips, uh, your leg in line parallel to the floor. This will drop down. The um, camera really helps so that you can see yourself working. All right, from here, extend your leg forward, drop your toes down, heel up, and now let's just do a little pulse. Outer hip burning. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Bend your knees, shake it out, Woo, tap it out, and then roll onto your belly before we move on to the other side, moving into our swimmers. So we won't use the ball here. Make sure it's nearby. Extend your arms out to the above you. Pinkies down, thumbs up. Separate your feet a little wider than your hips. Nice and slow with our swimmers. Start by lifting your left leg and your right arm, and then lower everything down. Left arm, right leg up. Lengthen across the room. 
and then lower it down. We'll repeat it slow three more times. So lift opposite hand, opposite leg, lengthen, and lower. Opposite hand, opposite leg, lengthen, and lower. I won't do it fast today. I won't, it doesn't feel good for my back. However, if you'd like to go there, you can lift everything off of the floor and start to move into your swimmers a little faster, keeping your hips nice and level so you're not rocking side to side. Everything remains nice and, and, uh, and uh, what's the word? Everything just remains nice and static while your shoulders and your legs move. You continue doing it nice and slow. And lower last time on each side. You're doing it fast, keep going. The breath is through your nose for five, out the mouth for five. All right, let it go, lower your head down. You can windshield wiper your legs side to side and then roll on to your right side. I'm going to come into tabletop and then move into the right side line facing you, okay? And again, find the same variation you did on the other side with your head on the ball, if you did that on the other side. Back in line with the back of your mat, bottom rib lifted, and thighs parallel to the, to the top of your mat. From here, we start with the clams up for two, and down for two. Pause when your leg is parallel to the floor, up for two, and down for two. Open, and close, that's it. Keep going just like that. Find the point where you feel like that crank in your hip and try to go an inch beyond that. You'll feel it where you kind of pause. Can you go beyond that? And then lower. Get a little bit more range of motion on this side than I did the other, actually. Let's go for four. Last three. Woo. Two. Last one, hold it in center, knees together, point your toes now up for two in a diagonal, and in for two, out for two, in for two. Keep your bottom rib lifted. Remember finding that range of motion of the internal rotation of your hip, and then out, diagonal, like it's an arrow. Let's go for four, last three, Two, keep it out on one, and we'll move into our kicks. Flex your ankle, lower your foot, kick forward, point and sweep it back. Kick forward, point and sweep it back, keep going. Here I need my hand out in front of me like a little tripod, because I notice I tend to lean back once I go into that extension. You want to stay nice and squared with your chest. So again, it's just the hip, the leg moving forward and back. And you're not letting go of your ribs either. It's really easy to just kind of back bend into it, but you're keeping everything engaged. Let's go for four. Last three. Nice and long through your leg. Try to get any bend out of your knees here. Lengthening two. Last one. Hold it here. Drop your toes. So you can think of a floppy fish. And then you just pulse eight. Seven. Nice and long through your side. Six. Five, four, three, two, and one. Bend your knees. Woo. Shake it out. Okay, come up to your palms. Swing your legs out in front of you. And we're getting into our next exercise, which is front leg pull. Just my hair. We'll start with reverse plank. Uh, and then we'll get into our full leg pull, oh, leg pull rather, before we finish our class. So reverse plank, hands behind you, either palms face you, fingers face you, or arms out, pinkies, fingers out to a T. Avoid putting your hands back, not very optimal for the wrist. So either forward or out into a T or a little bit of a diagonal. Send your legs out in front of you, open your chest, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, scoop your pelvis forward, slowly lift up, into your reverse plank, keeping your belly pulled in. Either gaze forward or up, avoid letting your head roll back. And then you exhale, lower it down. And adjust my hands. Breathe in, breathe out, scoop and lift. You can modify by doing this from a all four position. So you scoop and lift up, and scoop and lower down. Three more like that, scoop and lift. 
and then scoop and lower. Last one, I'll do the full variation. Scoop and lift and hold. Moving into our front leg pull. Left leg is where, as it remains, soften behind your left knee. If you have knee pain or injury, avoid this exercise. Lift your right leg up. Then lower your heel down, left leg up. Lower your heel down and roll down back to your seat. Let's repeat that, but now I'll show you the modification with your knee bent. You scoop up. You can balance, bring your right shin to tabletop, or even straighten your leg, and then march it down. Left leg up, march it down, and then you lower. Let's do it one more time. Take your variation, either bent knee or straight legged. Inhale up. Exhale, lift, and lower. Lift, and lower, and then Roll it down. Bend your knees towards you. Sit up nice and tall. Shake out your wrists. That was a nice stretch for the chest, but it is a little bit more weight bearing on the shoulders. So let's take a stretch. Draw your right arm across your body. Press your shoulder away from your ear. Arms up to a T stretch. And then left arm crosses over. Shake out your wrists. Okay, out to a T. From here, come on to all fours. All fours position. Tabletop or quadruped once again. Let's do cat cow just to kind of get a little bit of mobility. So exhale to cat pose. Round your spine. Lift your mid back to the sky. And then inhale, lengthen. Drop into a little bit of an extension cow pose. Let's do that again. Exhale, cat. And inhale, neutral or a little cow. All right, front leg pull is next. So from forefront leg pull, we move into a plank. High plank, high push up position. Spread your fingers wide, press into your fingertips and your knuckles, broaden across your back so you're not dumping into your shoulders. From here, we step one leg back into plank, followed by the other, and hold. We'll hold for 10 seconds. Pull your belly in, squeeze your inner thighs towards one another as you engage your glutes, and drive your heels back. Micro bend your elbows and point them back versus out, right? So there's a subtle bend. Only you really know it's there. That will protect your joints. We're here for five. Last four. Notice if your head is dropping down. Lift the back of your skull towards the ceiling. Three, two, on one. Tuck your chin toward your chest. Lift your hips to the sky for a little pike pose or a down dog before we get into our next exercise. Bend your knees one at a time. All right, front leg pull is next. So inhale, shift forward, high plank. So we got into the precise high plank. Now we add on. Lift your left leg up. Bend your left knee into your chest. Send your left leg back and then tuck your toes plank. Right leg up, knee into your chest. Send it back and high plank. Repeat that, left knee in and back. Right knee in and back. Keep going just like that. That is the exercise. Think of yourself standing. So essentially, this is like a march. You're not moving your hips or hiking your hips or moving anything except pulling your knee in and out. Let's repeat for eight, less seven, and count down six, nine, five, four, three, two, and one. High plank hold. Pike your chin into your chest. Pike your hips up to your pike position. Whew. Deep breath in. And breath out. I love a good sigh. It's good for the nervous system. From here, soften your knees. Walk your hands towards your feet at the back of your mat. Forward fold. Soften your knees very generously. Even rest your belly on top of your thighs. And then let your upper body hang heavy. Stretch your lower back. Keep your core always engaged just a little bit when you're in these forward folds. Tip your weight forward to the balls of your feet. A little paper slice of air in underneath your heels is okay. Add the inhale, slowly begin to roll up as if you were stacking your spine on top of your pelvis for the first time. You're building yourself up to standing. Again, one of those traditional Pilates exercises, the standing roll up at the top. Roll your shoulders down your back. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest. Begin to curl down. One vertebra at a time. You're peeling yourself down off of the wall now. Soften your knees, walk your hands back forward. The high plank, high push up position. Moving into our last full exercise. Shift your weight forward to the balls of your feet and lower your knees down. 
That little extra push forward will help arrive our shoulders a little bit beyond our wrists as we move into our push-ups. For our push-ups, it's a narrow tricep push-up. So bend your knees in towards your glutes, cross your ankles, and get your hamstrings involved here. You can also tuck your toes and move from high plank. It's up to you. From here, we lower down for the count of two. Elbows point back and then press up for two. I'm gonna face you. So down for two, as you lower down, think of pointing your elbows back, but you're not squeezing too hard into your side body. There's a little bit of space under your arms. And your lower down can be just a couple inches. Down for two, up for two. But if you go beyond that, pause at 90 degrees in your elbows. So you're not going further. Your shoulders do not touch the floor. That will protect your shoulders in the long run. Let's go for eight. Let's do single counts here. Seven, last six, lots of abdominals, lots of shoulders and arms and triceps. Five, four, last three, exhale to lift, inhale to lower two. And last one, push it back to a rest pose, hips to heels, forehead to the earth. Whew, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, roll up to a seated position. We'll scoot to the center of the mat. And I'll face you. Cross your shins. Sit up nice and tall. Hands to your knees. From here, inhale your arms over high. Let's take a mermaid side stretch like we would do on the reformer. Exhale your right hand down to the floor. Reach your left hand up and over. You can recline your right forearm to the ground. Think of depressing your hips, your sit bones into the floor. Anchor them down so you're not lifting up. Get that nice side body stretch. From here, you can take a little bit of a rotation to your right. Pull your belly in. Press your palms into the ground. Return back to your side stretch. Inhale your arms up and overhead. Let's switch left shin on top now, or right shin on top, the opposite shin, it doesn't matter. Exhale. Left hand down, right hand up and over. Anchor your sit bones to the floor. Whew, a little less lateral flexion for me today. It's my lower back. Breathe in. Exhale, find a little bit of rotation. Rotate your chest towards your thigh. Again, pull your belly in when you're doing these rotations. You're not just letting it go. Everything needs to stay engaged. Come back to your side stretch like we were doing in reformer. Come through center, inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, add a little back bend. Gaze up, your hands to heart center to end class, close your eyes, and just thank yourself for, for dedicating your time, your energy, your breath, your precision, concentration, all those elements and principles really united in this practice. I thank you for allowing me to guide you. And as a symbol of gratitude, let's take a breath in together and a breath out, really centering yourself before we prepare for the rest of our day. Blink open your eyes and give yourself a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining me, Classical Matt Pilates. I hope to see you the rest of the week. Have a great day, everyone.